things of God. Because when God sees that commitment, you will be amazed how he will release that favor, that how he will infuse energy into your being. Our bishop said it the other time. He said, it is because of God's energy, the anointing of his energy upon my life. That is why I can stand on my feet and lay hands on over 50,000 people without sitting down. You think that is human strength? And he's not 15 years or 20 years. And we have people that are not 20 and they can't even stand for 30 minutes. Are you getting it? The manifestation of the supernatural kingdom commitment. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So understand that the mystery of God's favor is very deep. It is very deep. And it teaches us that a man could be his best and still fail without God's favor. You can be your best. You can have all the degrees and still fail in life without his favor. Somebody said, ah, Pastor, what are you talking about? I know a lot of people who don't believe in God, they've made it in life. No, it depends on the yardstick with which you measure success in the world. The world measures success by how much acquisition you have. The money you have piled up. But let me tell you, I'm a pastor and I'm telling you this. We have people that have piled up hundreds of millions of dollars. They can't even sleep. Some of them have all the millions. They don't have good home. Some of them have all the millions. Their children are like vagabonds. Some of them, the doctors must attend to them every week. Some are so fearful they can't even eat the food they want to eat. You call that success? No! So that is why the Bible says, don't envy them. You don't know what they are going through. Physically, you see them outside, flashy. But they are, they, they are being tormented that they don't even see the money they have, they don't see it. Because it is not the solution. Money cannot fight the devil. So you can be your best and still fail in life without divine favor. That is what we have to understand. And whereas the, I mean, a most unlikely candidate for success could rise to the top on accounts of divine favor. That is why God, by God's favor, a stark illiterate can become a ruler in the person of Peter. He never been to school and he became a ruler leading multitudes on accounts of divine favor. So when we are talking of divine favor, it's all about God at work in your life, making things to happen. When God begins to favor your business, you don't have to know people to patronize your good. Please understand that. They don't have to like you. Because there is a force at work. When divine favor is upon the wife, your husband sees you every day and it's like he's meeting you for the first time every day. When divine favor is upon a husband, your wife, she will submit to the state that she wish she could cook herself for you to eat. Are you understanding me? Yes. This morning, my wife looked at me and said, Annie, you are so special. You are such a blessing to us. My head almost dropped. <laughs> Are you, the favor of God. There is too many chaos in homes because the home lacks the favor of God. It's not money that makes a peaceful home. I've sat down. I've sat two rich people, very rich, in the, as far as the world is concerned, extremely rich. I sat them down and I spoke to them as if I gave birth to them. I mean, physically. And in terms of age, they are way ahead of me. But they were being stupid. It was like two captains in one ship. So which, which direction should the ship sail? Unless we divide it into two. And you know what that means? Divorce. And after I, I, I have finished speaking to them, the mind just broke down in front of me. You understand? It is not money. We are not speaking against money. Of course. 
We want money. God is releasing abundance of money upon us. But money must not control you. You control money. Money don't tell you what to do. You tell money what to do. That is why God doesn't put money in our heart. He put money in our hands. When money gets into your heart, you are in trouble. A lot of people have the money in their heart. That is why they can't release it when it comes to the kingdom. When anything gets into your heart, it becomes a God. And Jesus said, you cannot serve two masters. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. What must I do to enjoy divine favor? There is what I call favor provoking sacrifice. Favor provoking sacrifice. Psalm 126 from verse 1. Favor provoking sacrifice. The Bible says in Psalm 126, When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the hidden, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weep, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his shelf with him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When the Lord turned again our captivity, we were like them that dream. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. When the Lord turned again our captivity, it means that it has happened before. And they knew how it happened. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Now, the sowing in tears here doesn't mean that you, you, you are crying as you are sowing it. You understand? But the sowing in tears means that the situation in your life is not comfortable. The situation is, is very disturbing. The situation is hard, yet you go ahead and sow. That is why the Bible talking about David, he said, um, Isaac, he said, Isaac sowed in the time of famine. That is the time you have to hold on to the little you have. Because there is famine. Nothing is growing, nothing is producing. And the little Isaac had, the Bible says, he sowed. So the Bible says, he that, they that sow in tears, they are those that will reap in joy, favor, provoking sacrifice. God, you turn away our captivity. Uh, it was like a dream. We couldn't believe it because it was beyond us. They couldn't believe it because they had done nothing for that to happen. It was just divine favor. But Lord, do it again. We know how it happened. We know how it happened. How did it happen? They that sow in tears reap in joy. Noah came out of the ark. And the first thing he did was to raise a sacrifice to God. And when the sacrifice went up to God, God said, Noah, from today, I avert the curse. 